after those two episodes, Paul, I don't I don't know what I could what I could say to hashtag nation because we probably got uh, a litany of hate mail. I just know it. I know it's coming in. But the point is, is uh, a lot of these things going on. I think a lot of people more than going into the 2019 season, going into the 2020 season, I think there's even more uncertainty surrounding the Bills and the NFL in general. So I think what we should do is possibly revisit a topic that we talked about previously on Sportscaster. If you guys are not sub to Sportscaster, go down in the description, become a fan of us. We we talk about um, exclusive content only to Sportscaster. We have our What If series. We have 10 parts of it. Um, They're actually pretty entertaining that we've been told. They're pretty entertaining. But one of the topics was... Uh, and if you want to circle this around to the Buffalo Bills, we talk about the Carolina connection all the time. And I don't want to, I just, yeah. I don't want to beat that topic even more. But given the recent developments of what's going on around the nation and the world, um, right. specific to the NFL and specific to the <clears throat> Bills, do you think that this is a reason why they're going with so many Carolina players that they know versus some kind of unknowns because they don't have a chance to see these guys? If you have a like a staple of players that you really trust, like Mario Addison's a perfect example, right? You can call Mario Addison and say, hey, listen, I can't get your medicals. I can't get the team doctors out there to uh, to check you out. I need you to be real on with the player and you can be honest. Then you're not going to have a Michael Brocker situation like with the Ravens where, you know, they, he was going to sign and then all of a sudden, no bueno, medicals turned out to be garbage. <laughs> you know, like he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, FYI. Let me hold on. Let me fax that contract over. I'll sign it. By the way, I have to sign it with my left hand because I tore my pec, uh, you know, like a month ago. Right. Like you don't have any you don't have any mysteries uh, when you have players that you, that you trust. Um, and especially since you're asking players to jump into an existing system and rookies have a long and hard time doing that. Yes. Whereas veteran players, players that you're already familiar with, you could do that right now. They could they could walk into the system today and play for you today. Um, and in a possibly shortened off season, because we don't know exactly when this is going to come out, yeah. uh, when the NFL restrictions are going to be lifted for, you know, for gatherings, um, that that's a big deal. You got to have people that you can trust. Um, yeah. You know, as as yeah. as a player, right? How would you feel walking in? If let's say let's just use Mario Addison as a, as an example. You're Mario Addison. You're changing cities, right? You're walking from Carolina, the only place that you've ever known, really. Yeah. Uh, well, he changed to, a few uh, teams. Well, no, Addison, he, he, he changed a few teams, so he's a bad example. But um, it, you're, Darryl you're Williams. teams again, right? Daryl Williams, that's a good example. Okay. Um, what uh, What are you expecting when you walk into one Bills drop? Uh, the, the thing about Williams, I think specifically, is that I think with the uncertainty, we, talk, we, we like to take the front office approach to it and, okay, what are they going to be looking for? What are some of the things that are going to be going on with this team? Who are they going to sign? What are they going to do? I think if we took a player perspective of this, and obviously I was never a player in the NFL, but I'm just sitting there. Daryl Williams didn't have a job. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, he can't go visit teams to try to get a job. I, mm-hmm. I imagine if, if you're out of work and you have to go get a job, but you're not allowed to interview with anybody. Right. Okay, and some of the things that you're supposed to do, and some of the things that you have to do, as far as uh, um, uh, for your job interview, you're not allowed to do that. Okay, hey, I don't have a job right now. No one's gonna sign me. I can't work out for them. I can't do this for them. I can't do that. What am I gonna do? YouTube myself lifting weights? Like, what's gonna what's gonna happen? Right. But so they have to go on what the film is. Right. The, the, you know, big eye in the sky. However, switch it over to the Buffalo Bills. They're like, listen, Bean, Derek Williams might have been a guy that Bean actually really liked and McDermott really liked when they were down in Carolina. So he's like, listen, we'll, we'll sign you. We'll bring you up here. You'll have a job because like, we know what you can do. We've seen it firsthand what you can do. That's mm-hmm. some of the things. I think coming from the player perspective, they're like, listen, I don't have a job right now. Now I do have a job. Now I have a purpose. Now I have a goal. And the narrative being in Buffalo, how, how it's changed you making the playoffs. You didn't make the playoffs. You went ten and six. You gave a lot of teams a run for their money. You have this solid defense. You have this emerging quarterback. You have all these weapons on the offensive side of the ball, and you have an uh, offensive line where you're sitting there. Now, the perspective I think of everyone that's especially just specifically about the offensive line. You coming into Buffalo, all right? They threw together all these guys last minute last year, and guess what? Mm-hmm. They performed beautifully. So the mm-hmm infrastructure and the blueprint that's laid out especially by our man 
OG Bobby Johnson. Um, they're able to work with you, especially if you have some familiarity with how the offense is, is supposed to be run and some, some of the verbiage. So I think you're coming into a system, especially Mario Addison a little bit more than Daryl Williams. Mario Addison played for Eric Washington as a D-line coach and Sean McDermott. OK, you got a little right. you got a little bit of that flair from Leslie Frazier coming in and how he wants to run certain things. But you don't have to change up a lot of the things that you're doing. I mean, Addison going up there and then Butler going up there. That had to be incentive for Butler right. to go up there because his his right. most successful years was playing next to Addison. So mm -hmm. th this thing that's going on around the nation, around the world, if we were to try to put it in this small little box of, of the NFL, is starting to mm -hmm. you're starting to see a lot of guys go. Listen, I'm familiar with that guy. I like playing for that guy. I'm gonna, I'm going to have a job if I play for that guy. I'm going to go up there. Or I'm going to go right. here. I'm going to go there. Right. So that's why you see a lot of these guys. Detroit was the same way. <laughs> How many former Patriot guys went to Detroit to play right. for Patricia? Yeah. You know what I mean? So right. and we heard some some crazy stuff going on about Matt Patricia now. So uh, it, it's going to be very interesting to see and very interesting. Um, how a lot of these things are going to shape out, but bringing it back to the season itself, mm -hmm. does it benefit or hurt the bills if the season is not canceled, but shortened? So I want to, I want to just pivot back to the point on the free agent perspective, right? So let's just say the draft happens, right? But then the NFL, because of everything that's happening in the nation says that, okay, everything was supposed to start, you know, you're, everybody's supposed to report in, you know, early May. And they say, okay, well, now everybody's not going to be able to report till late June. What that does is the players, the free agents that are in this position right now, guess what position they're going to be in May and in early June? The same position they're in now. <laughs> and it's going to be just an absolute tidal wave of free agent signings once teams can actually medically evaluate players. Yes. Because then it's going to be, okay, I've got you on the phone. I got a one year deal for you for a million dollars. Are you coming or no? Because I've got four other people I can call. Right. Yeah. That's the situation that these free agents are going to find themselves in. So it behooves somebody like Daryl Williams or Vernon Butler to sign with Buffalo when they're on the phone with the organization because they're not going to have to deal with the, you know, take it or leave it offers to, um, or in a month and a half or in two months, whenever the NFL kind of resumes normal practices. Yeah. Now, as far yeah. as the scope of does it play to the Bills advantage of a shortened season, that depends on how, how, how strong your front office is. Right. How strong is your front office and your coaching staff? Um, if you feel that they're really strong, then it does play into the Bills advantage because they can kind of kick the mud off the tires a little bit quicker than other organizations. Yeah. But you tell me, what do you think? About them having a uh, free agent frenzy after all this stuff is lifted and everything re resumes back normal? No, no, no. Uh, as far as like the, the structure from uh, do you feel the Bills have an advantage over the other teams in, you know, inside the AFC? Not necessarily the AFC East. I don't want to compare them against the Patriots, but against the other teams in the AFC, are the Bills better positioned for a quicker start to the season than than other teams in the AFC? Well, I, I would say just for the simple fact is you have so many more. I, you know, I haven't I haven't broken down the other teams, so don't don't take this as gospel. But I, they have so many more guys that are returning mm -hmm. for their team, especially on the defensive side of the ball, that understand the system what it is and, right. and can get into the system um the learning curve for mario addison and vernon butler is not going to be uh, immense i mean quentin jefferson you just plug him into that um jordan phillips role i think that that'll work out perfectly for him um so a lot of these guys that are coming in are very similar are very familiar with some of the system and a lot of things that are going on for the bills to get that jump uh as far as the offensive side of the ball um the only the only kind of concern that I have is that John Brown was quoted last year, as we as we said many times, is that learning this offense is one of the toughest offenses he's had to learn. Stephon mm -hmm. Diggs is coming into this offense, not a not a similar offense that he's ran in Minnesota. So that's mm -hmm. my only reservation is that is he going to pick up the system having limited time with it? Plus the fact is, which you've said Paul many times on this show, that in, early in the season, the defense usually has. Yeah, the advantage on the teams uh, early, but I kind of take the flip side of that, where unless there's a lot more tape on these guys, we, where they start to fizzle out near the end of the year, I think that's the that's the that's usually the narrative that goes on is the fact that offenses tend to be explosive a little bit earlier, in my mm -hmm. opinion, and then they start to fizzle out when defenses start to figure out what their tendencies are. So in a shortened mm -hmm. season, 
do you think the do you think the Bills have an advantage or just I think they'd have an advantage um because they're able to do certain things, but the only concern that I have is Stefan Diggs. That's the only concern yeah. I would have. Yeah, and that's and that's a fair concern because you're asking Diggs to do something that no Bills wide receiver was successful at doing at last year, and that was playing opposite John Brown. Yeah. Right? Like no Bills yes. receiver was successful playing opposite John Brown. Didn't matter who they put there. Perfect. Nobody was good at it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about not good. I mean, it was it the element that he brings to the offense is so much more amplified because mm -hmm. of how crisp of a route runner he is, and that's what this offense is predicated on. It's predicated right. on getting in and out of your cuts so Allen can get the ball out of his hands quicker. Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah, and it, it, there's a lot to be desired on um, you know from an offensive perspective with this team. Mm -hmm. um, I think we all have concerns on the offensive side of the football. I think a lot of people are settled from the defensive side. Sure. We'd like to see a little bit more edge pressure. You know, we're still not super sure on your strong side linebacker position. Um, you know, you, you just gave Jordan Poirier an extension. So I'm sure everybody feels good about that. Uh, not a lot of people are loving Josh Norman, but I really think that could be a great sign. He just brought EJ Gaines back for the umpteenth time for whatever reason. Um, but that's an example of wanting to keep that communication consistent. EJ Gaines didn't play for anybody last year, and I don't think a lot has changed. So I think they're kind of backing up that position um, by bringing in somebody like Gaines, uh, who will be able to, you know, kind of translate and, and uh, be the example for, you know, either some of these undrafted free agents that they're going to eventually sign or even give Norman some competition because EJ Gaines is going to have the leg up on Norman right away. Norman's been out of the system for a long time. Um, so Gaines will have an immediate advantage over Norman immediate. Um, it's not from a lack of talent. Gaines just gets hurt all the time. You know, we talked, we talked, uh, about uh, on an episode before about the Carolina connection and what's going on and how sometimes the bills like getting older players. We looked at the 2015 mm -hmm. team and, you know, you yeah. had a uh, peanut Tillman at 34, you had mm -hmm. Roman Harper at 33, you had Jared Allen at 33, you had all these old, you know, you had these older players. And if you guys have ever been on our lads uh, for the, for the depth chart of the Buffalo bills, it's actually a great site to kind of, you know, give yourself some reference of who's on the team, what's going on. Um, if you look at it, my, uh, currently right now, if they had their, they have their depth chart. It doesn't does not say that it's a Bills official depth chart. This is their Ooh, depth chart. Right. Yeah. You have Mario Addison, Starla Tulley, Jerry Hughes, and Josh Norman are your only players that you have currently. Like four guys projected on the starters that are over thirty. Mm -hmm. So you got seven guys. Because so this is a very young emerging team that has a lot of yeah. talent on it. Uh, and when you bring in a when you bring in an EJ Gaines to, con to compete with Teron Johnson at that slot corner position, we saw Teron Johnson had a little trouble with Julian Edelman last year. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I know that's just one point that I brought up, but that being said, if you, you, they love bringing in that mixture of veteran leadership with some of the young guys to, to kind of, okay, here's what I know from this system. Here's what I know from how, when, when I actually played in it in this scenario, I'm going to pass this on to you. And then, when the time is right, they're going to move on from that player, and then the the, the younger player gets their contract, and then they they, they move ahead. So right. I don't. It's it's fascinating to see on paper what this team could possibly be, and especially mm -hmm. in a in a shortened season, if it is a shortened season, right. how fast out of the gates can this team come together? I mean, it's it will definitely accelerate Josh Allen's learning curve, but I'm so I'm so curious to see that what is this pandemic going to do to the 2020 season and how will that yeah. shape guy, how they draft, how they're going to approach free agency. I, I see it being like, like you, I see it being a flood. If this gets lifted and then all these free agents, you'll see all these free agents signed right after that when they're able mm -hmm. to actually visit teams. So I think right. that's why people are kind of, you know, they're either signing guys that they're familiar with or they're kind of mm -hmm. just like, okay, we'll wait. Let's just wait mm -hmm. because if nobody touches you, we'll sign you. But, we're, let's just wait for right now because we're not really sure about that. And, and that's why I think yeah. that the draft's going to be amplified a little bit. So, Yeah, and I, I got to disagree a little bit with the draft because these are players that are not going to make an impact right away for you. So if you're talking about an abbreviated offseason or, or an abbreviated season, rookies are not going to be that big a help to you right out of the gate. Well, if you're being specific to rookie wide receivers, yeah, I understand. The NFL moves so fast. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Defenders okay. will have a leg up. I believe running backs will have a leg up. I believe linemen will have a leg up. Mm, yeah, I agree to disagree on that one. Oh, I, did, okay. I agree to disagree. All right. Well, I, we'll throw we'll throw it to the nation. Hashtag nation. 
if if the season gets shortened and or canceled, will that amplify or take away from the NFL draft coming up this year? I'm very curious to see what your guys' take is, and you know who's going to be answering all of those questions for you. So just yeah, let you guys know. Yeah. We're out, guys. Thanks. See ya.